what we're asking is that uh, whoever would like to speak <coughs> to come down here in front so we'll make, make it uh, fair to the public and fair to the board so that the board can understand and the public can hear. Uh, and, the, and we'll be setting a time limit of three minutes. So we're opening it up to the public. <coughs> Can I ask a question about the three minute meeting time here? Now, last time. Come down, come down front and state your name. What? Come down front here and state your name. Sit here. Right there, it's good. That's funny. Uh, let me break up. I have a question about the three minute um, limitation. Last time I was here, I was experiencing <coughs> watching this be uh, imposed. Do we now have something better than someone's wristwatch to do this? Is there a timer? And does the person have a, a warning that their three minutes are just about up? Well, we, we stole the cooking thing, I believe. Okay. <laughs> Next timer. But, uh, that, that's that, all I want to know. That's so we can do it, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you'll let me know like, like, uh, uh, while you know. Uh, 30 seconds uh, of over drink. <laughs> Anybody would like to just yeah. My name is Eddie Wilkerson. Oh, uh, down the rock where you Not everybody here has a computer. I have one, but I have not yet to the internet. And we really don't get much information about what's going on with this gas thing. Maybe you could give us some input, you know, what's going on, or whatever, and give us a little something. You might have been in touch with people that know what's going on. I don't think that's a question that I can answer here at this meeting. But, uh, if you would like to contact me at some point, uh, I'd try to help you. Well, it's in the talk, actually. If, uh, uh, if you have a computer, I'm sure there's a lot of information on the computer. Yeah. I'm not a computer person. <laughs> I thought maybe you could give us a little, you know, just put on what's going on in the moratorium business. Well, as far as pipeline, I can give you a little information as far as pipeline. Right. Bluestone is, has completed uh, their pipeline. There, there is gas going through their pipeline. They have not completed the rest direction in, in the roads. They still have that road to take it up. And the town is right on top of that. There is another pipeline that is looking to come through the town of Sanford. That's Constitution. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's what you should say. That's, the that's really all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Thank you. I have a question about the Constitution pipeline. I'm Barbara Lester. Um, about five weeks ago, in our paper was a short article about it, but. It said that the United States Army Court of Engineers was putting a halt or requesting, strongly requesting a halt to the Constitution Pipeline path that was discussed just before that at a public meeting here in Deposit. And I wondered if anyone here could answer any questions about what's happening with the Constitution Pipeline path because they want to make a change. According to this article, the Corps of Engineers is disturbed about how Many people did not allow the surveyors on the property. Only 61% allow people on the property to do the survey, and there's dreams involved and bodies of water that the permits have to be given by the United States Corps of Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers, for the streams. And they don't like what they're seeing, and they can't get permits when they can't get on the land to survey. And I was hoping one of you could give us some updates on that. It's been, it's in about five local papers. This is the only on star article that's going to be Do you know anything about it? I know constitutional too, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Well, it was five weeks ago. I would think something would have gone by very fast since then. I really don't. I really don't. Somebody approaches you about a pipeline, 
they intend to put on the problem, which I, I went through. And I had to tell this gentleman that uh, I cannot give you permission to go on my land because I'm in contract with HCO Energy. You have to contact these people and get their permission because of the property's lease. Am I liable to XCO if I allow them to go on my property to sell me? I don't think you are, but uh, I really can't answer that question.
connection is because we've heard a lot about compressor stations with emissions and a lot of dangerous um, health risks involved with that. Um, so it would be really nice. When I talked to the Bluestone, they referred me to a computer um, website that gave me no information whatsoever. And I really think that um, they owe it to the town to tell us exactly what's going on up there. Just because it's up in the hills doesn't mean it really doesn't affect us. If it's affecting our air and it's, um, you know, has potential risk, we need to know about it. I, I can't really help you on that. But, uh, all I know is that they don't have the compressor at present time. So there's no compressors up there that's, that's uh, running. You're not going to install it. Probably will be in the future. If the pressure goes down and why, then they'll have to put pressure back. But there's none now. Will we have any say in that as a community? No. So it's already too late once the pipeline's gone for to have a hearing on the compressor station. So it's stated to begin with that. So we, if we have concerns about that with the Constitution, that needs to be addressed before. There won't be a compressor station with a Constitution. They're going to hook into a compressor station that already exists, and that's going to be up towards Albany. So there won't be a compressor station with a Constitution. Would there be any kind of hearing if the Bluestone decides to put a compressor station in? I don't believe so. I can't really answer that question. Is there someone who could? Excuse me? Is there someone who could answer that? Could we have the Bluestone people come and talk to us? That we can look into that. Okay. Thank you. Please call me Bluestone. And I just came back from the Ohio Pennsylvania border and there was uh, a lot of activity out there, pipelines put in, and there was gas drilling, there was uh, open stations going in. And we drove around quite extensively, and some of these lines were going next to beautiful homes and things like that. And actually, I didn't see one for or one against fracking. Either, either way, sign out there at all. I mean, the place was just moving. And another thing, in Canada, the natural gas industry <coughs> is scheduled to have a trillion dollars income from it, trading 130,000 jobs, moving so that every province is going to have some kind of income from it. And uh, I think it's a win-win situation for our area to have natural gas benefits. And the landowners, I went to a meeting the other night, it's called Fleece New York, and I tried to say something, but right away they grabbed the microwave from me after I made a couple comments. So it depends on who controls the mic, I guess. But anyway, I think the benefits for the landowners and the benefits for the community, plus the benefits for the tax situation, is going to be such a plus. You know, if these other states can do it, certainly New York can. Thank you. My name is Glenn Keegan. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but thank you, Carl. I uh, spent a lot of time and put considerable effort in determining the monies lost in this township over the last four years. Primarily, our problem is the DRBC with their ban on drilling, not the New York State Moratorium. I can assure you, and I will privately explain this to you in detail, we, in four years, have lost $70 million in royalty income. And that's based on the XTO 15% an average wellhead of 7 million cubic feet a day. That, Carl, is how much money is being lost in this township. It's a lot of money. <coughs> if you need further
further explanation, I'd be happy to give it to you. May I say one more thing? Uh, I want to give you some perspective on what a trillion dollars is. In seconds, it's 32 years for a billion. A trillion is a thousand billion. So in seconds, it takes 32,000 years to have a trillion. I mean, that, that's what Canada faces. And, and New York has uh, studied this thing for, what, five, six years now? <laughs> I don't know how long it takes to study something, but it seems like it's a little bit absurd. Anybody else? <clears throat> Is there any way we can send a letter to Mr. Como and tell him, you know, hey, uh, Pencil Man is ripped in the hall and stay in New York. Save his stamp. Como, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> we can do it and get off the pot. You know what I mean? What do you say? He knows I'll give you his phone number. Nice. Get that on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, earn heart with a knee. Zoom it. Anybody else? Can you see it in the post? Do we have just like to say something real quick if you don't mind? I'm Sandra Davis. Um I wanna back up on what Carl said a little. I have two kids and an hour on the way. And I have to send my husband to Syracuse to work every day. Okay, I'm taking away from his kids to make the same money he made a big one but yet we're going to shut this down because our air is going to go bad and, and it's going to connect, contaminate our aquifers. Come on, there has not been an aquifer contamination yet. We all know it. Let's do our research, get our facts straight. Anyways, I just wanted to say that real quick. It's, it's a big struggle. It's tough. My husband is the only one until 6 at night. He leaves at 4 in the morning. He has to our kids. It's not fair to them. We, we need to think about our children and their future here. I want my kids to stay here when they grow up. I want to pass down my land to them. I don't want to have to lose my land to taxes and move away because, you know, because we didn't accept what the earth gave us. Thank you. Running the water trucks for Bluestone? I'll take that as a no. Um, the DPC is sending out an inspect inspector, I believe, in the next three days. And I've heard reports of the water trucks going to various areas and returning. And this is when they're doing the drilling under the highway. Could we send somebody from the town during that inspection? Because you know, it's private property, and either way, we're going to either certify that they were all on the up and up and there was no issue, or maybe we might certify something else, that if you take a sample, we might find that when they park their truck behind the trees, that's, they're doing something. Would you allow that? The BC would allow it? Would you grant somebody from the town to be there during the inspection? The town, the town, in fact, that's the, um, your, this next meeting, you're, you're, you're going to be a inspector, correct? Well, that's going to be a New York State engineer. Um, the question I think he's asking for is if we get somebody here or can the town say it's okay, which I really feel that yeah, having well, asked to an attorney uh, for that. Answer because I, you know, we just can't come out of your land without, you know, right. whether you want us there or not. I mean, just say, well, I'm coming to your land. I understand, but we're trying to clear that because either way, it's got to either give a certification that they're on the up and up or a certification. Well, if you've got a New York State DEC, you've got a New York State DEC officer there, I think. No, I don't trust them. Um, I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Right Do we trust you? But that, that's not my place to say. But don't trust me. Should. You go. I'll, I'll let you. I think it you trust her more than the DC officer. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'd like Thank to tell you is that the DEC, I'll put you in contact with the people at the DEC that will allow a hearing for the compressor station because that's fully within our rights. I've already talked to the DEC about that. 
And for the people downwind who are, you know, impacted by that. In Windsor, there were a lot of people who were impacted, and they formed the group Crow as a result of what they felt their impact was. And um, so, uh, please, uh, I'll, I guess I'll email the clerk, and I expect, uh, I'm hoping we'll give a positive response if I show you the means of providing a hearing for us. Any information that you want, you can get through the Okay. Finally, um, Jersey Post. I, I'll sit down after this, but I, I want to have a response from all five board members. Just that, were they contacted? Who were they contacted by when the resolution was passed a year ago? And I believe you're asked to sign something that was, uh, you know, was 20 towns in favor of, you know, let's get gas drilling going. I, uh, to be specific, I don't want to be. The, the specific question is, who provided that resolution? Because I know it's identical verbatim. It's a copy with fill-ins from Afton, from Conklin. I could name about 20 towns where it's almost a copy. And so I'd like to know who provided that. You probably know more than what the board knows. No, I absolutely know nothing. If somebody approaches you, you know what it is. That's why I'm asking. And if each board member can say that they just don't know who provided that draft, and say it. Thank you. Back here. Anybody up? Nobody? Public session is closed.